Now the most difficult thing to understand is jealousy. See, so in the future, I'll use an example of Roxanne. Uh, if Roxanne fell in love with a younger guy than me, or an older guy than me, there's nobody older than me. But if she fell in love with a younger or older guy, if that's what she wants, it means that I'm not meeting her needs. And if I love her, really love her, I will help her pack, because that's what she wants. But in this country, we say, God damn it, you're breaking up the home. You're my wife, you're not going to get a leader. I'll break your back, you're leaving this home. You know, that isn't love. What happens to love during divorce? The wife says, I want the kids in the house. Where's all the love? Where's it gone? Is there really such a thing? No, there's not. Like I said, love fluctuates. Yeah. Yeah. So, so people don't even know how to love. But in the future, the word love will be thrown out and replaced by another word called extensionality. That means if, you, if you're a pilot and say your right wing catches fire, if you side slip, you can burn the fire off the wing. So a guy that you meet will say, in case your building catches fire, wet a blanket, lower yourself because smoke rises. That's extensional to you, really extensional, not patriotism. I swear to uphold the Constitution. That is not any measure of patriotism. Patriotism and love is what you do to extend another person's mind or life. A girl th is flattered today by you give her jewelry. She says, oh, how wonderful. You shouldn't have done that. Then you take it back and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so, it's, it's, it's all a bullshit world. So I'm saying, you know what extensionality means? A person that can extend your ability to understand the world you live in. That's real love. Yeah. So I say, I don't say, I think I try to give everybody the best information I have unless it's commercial. The guy says, in my, your helicopter, I notice that you don't have an anti-torque propeller. You know what that means? When a helicopter blade goes around, the body tends to turn the other way. So they have a propeller in the back that keeps it straight. But if they say to me, your helicopters don't have that, how come I don't tell them because that could be a commercial product? I don't want them to come to my meetings just to take all the wonderful ideas, patent them. That's what they did to me in the past. They used to come up to my table at the aircraft factory, watch what I was working on, and take out patents on it. You understand? They had no conscience. That's competition. Well, it's, like it's crude, I thought, and cruel. And the aircraft company owns everything you think of. Did you know that? When I go to work for Douglas and invent new things, they own everything I think of and say, and if some guy makes a new carburetor in his garage and sells it to General Motors, they say, and now General Motors brings you like General Motors did. Yeah. Do you understand yeah, what I'm saying? Okay. So inventors in the future will be taken care of like everybody else. They'll live well, drive the best cars, the country knows how to turn out. There'll be no junk equipment that breaks down. Because if it breaks down, it's a burden on society. Mm -hmm. It's a burden on resources. You understand that? Mm -hmm. So by making, if you drive a Mercedes, or some expensive car, and he drives a beat up old Volkswagen, if his brakes fail, you die. So we don't want any old cars on the road. Mm -hmm. An old car weighs as much as a new car, so we reprocess it. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah. That's says, oh, you guys are very nice. No, not we're nice. We don't want anything detrimental out there. So we turn out the best equipment and make it available for everybody. Yeah. Not because we're good Joes. If you work with the less than the best, you hurt people and yourself. Okay. You understand that? So kids will have any kind of books free of charge available, made available. Because the smarter the kids are, if they read Jack and the Beanstalk, it doesn't, it's not extension. <coughs> if they read Cinderella, where she touches a white mouse with a wand, and makes it into a horse. You know, if you bring up kids with that kind of shit, they can't be extensional. Or if you say, do you run faster than Billy? And Billy could be sent to <laughs> You understand? So what if you run faster than Billy? When I was a kid in school, kids used to walk over me and say, I can run faster than you. I said, you can probably run twice as fast as me. 
So they would win. <laughs> so what? Well, that's, that's competition. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't do any good. And then there's a guy with a football that runs through the field. And everybody likes sports. Yeah. It's the same fucking story over and over again. Nothing new. You're running with a football. And the people tackle them. As long as they keep you occupied with bullshit like that, you don't move forward. In the future, there's no game that's constant. It's always growing. So when you play tennis against yourself, you get better. And you don't try to get better to beat the other guy. You try to improve your judgment. Do you understand that? Yeah. yeah. Now, if a person is exceptionally creative, very inventive, we put him out in school to teach other kids how to invent. Because he has a method. See, I can teach anyone anything unless their hands are broken or their brain is damaged. I used to work with 50 kids. They all get 100. There were no variations in grade. But I, I worked differently. But if you try to teach kids how to draw and they look at the other kids drawing, if it's much better than theirs, they don't want to play that game. So I have a partition. And I tell each kid is doing well. You're doing very well. And they all move up slowly. Then in about three weeks, they're all good. Then I take away that thing. Yeah. See, you have to know that if I say to you, why can't you be like your brother, pardon your father? He cleans everything up and you leave everything around. <coughs> so when your brother falls down the stairs, he got a grin on his face because he's been mistreated. Mm -hmm. So you never, when you raise children, hold up one kid as your favorite then you make jealousy and envy. When you give kids grades in school, I give you an F, a failure, he gets an A. He says, I got an A. And everybody in school knows what grade did you get. So there you get bad feelings. All wrong. You never grade people. You upgrade those that are behind. You use the kids that know how to do things faster. Now if you ask people, how do you become creative? They don't know. We know. Yeah. So we make everybody creative.